what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel i was recently fortunate enough to go to gamescom in cologne germany to look at a lot of the new games that are coming out between now and the end of the year as well as next year and i wanted to spend a little bit of time with you today in a video discussing the six most impressive games the games that wowed me the most and made me want to get my hands on them as soon as possible with some of the information i was able to gather there and just in general some of the things i was able to see it was a fantastic weekend i went with my wife and one of my best friends we had a whale of a time we spent the entire weekend in town at the conference but also just out and about and it was just a really really great time but without any further ado hit it <laughs> First and foremost, I actually want to do some shout outs to games that didn't actually make my top six list, but nonetheless impressed me for various reasons. Right off the top of my head, the first one would be Street Fighter VI. Um, there's a difference to seeing this game as it is being advertised, of course, and we've all seen the trailers, we've all seen stuff on YouTube, but seeing the game actually in motion, seeing people play it, I am not a fighting game aficionado by any chance. Uh, I'm also not any good at those games, but I really do. I appreciate the level of skill that these players have when they play at high levels. And I was able to watch quite a bit of footage of players going and showing off the different mechanics of the game, which are new things which are being introduced in Street Fighter 6, or let's say things from previous Street Fighters that were being refined but also to see guys with some high level combat going up against each other and it was just a hell of a lot of fun the crowd was getting involved people were screaming and yelling and ooh and ah and all of that and it was just really 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 cool so that was fantastic it is obviously a game that i'll definitely give a try once it comes out and everything like that again like i said i'm not competitive in that scene and it's not something that i'm generally think that i'm going to be going for per se but jesus the game looks like a lot of fun it looks fucking flashy as hell and uh, just in general it looks it looks really really good it looks really really solid secondly would probably be lies of p so those of you that are familiar with you know games like uh bloodborne and you know dark souls and so on will have probably heard of lies of p before already it's a game in the same vein in fact this kind of looks like in a weird way and this is the best compliment that i can give this game it looks like bloodborne dlc it definitely shares some of the dna of that game but it's aesthetically it's like a game that is set in the same kind of like you know scenery it's like london you know it's dark and it's dingy and it's all of that and essentially what you are playing is a very loosely told version of the story of pinocchio and uh, there's not a whole lot more that i that i was able to discern from the trailers the footage and everything like that that we saw we got to see a lot of combat that we haven't necessarily seen so much of before in fact up until the point where i saw the footage that i saw now for lies of p i'd only seen snippets of cutscenes and that sort of thing before and i've only kind of like maybe even seen people talking about it on tiktok to be honest that's the first place that i ever heard about the game nonetheless on the channel here i do enjoy games like that uh, you know they frustrate the fuck out of me and they're tough as hell but i gotta say lies of p looks good it's a little bit the movement looks a little bit clunky to me and and honestly from software they, they there's a certain clunkiness to their games movements as well but you've kind of like as a as a fan of those games you would have gotten used to that over time and so you kind of like understand that although the idea of dodging and iframes and all of that stuff is still super important and is very much ingrained in that recipe so i just need to see if the same is true for lies of p 
but definitely what i've seen so far looks super super impressive and if you're a fan of games in that genre or just for that matter if you're a huge fan of bloodborne then this should be like an auto grab for you because it just looks that good and it plays relatively well in terms of what i've seen even though i didn't, couldn't get my hands on playing it myself it does look pretty cool but again like i said we need to see if that same sort of feel that you get for from software games even though sometimes the movement in those games can seem clunky can seem difficult to sort of get your head around and to control you know in a way that it makes it feel effective for you we have to see if that's the case for lies of p as well but what i saw really impressed um the third one is dead island 2 which was like a massive surprise for everybody coming to the show it's of course a game that that i don't know if you can say that it's been through development hell or anything like that but the bottom line is it's a game that was set to come out and then seemingly fucking disappeared or was cancelled or got, was forgotten about or anything like that and it's of course based on the dead island franchise so this is the sequel to the very popular island zombie you know wake up in a fucking hotel what the fuck happened zombie apocalypse game now i have to say i gotta be honest in a way i'm a little bit zombied out at the moment um i don't know i can't point to a specific reason as being the reason for that i just feel like i have a little bit of zombie fatigue and so that i'm not really in the mood necessarily for another zombie game but i have to say that when i originally saw the ad for dead island 2 which was you know fucking ages ago i think the game is nine years in the making now or something like that uh i i really liked the aesthetic the brightness the colors and everything that they were going for which is not usually associated with a zombie game i like the whole island thing and you know the hotels that you can go into and everything like that and they've certainly stuck with that but now you have even more features and everything being built into it one of the most impressive things i saw is that they have this like so uh, they call it procedural gore tech and basically what it is is it's that when a zombie an enemy attacks you or something like that and as you're fighting them you are actually chipping away at pieces of their body so what you the 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 slashes with a sword and you know all of these sorts of things as you break a zombie down while it's attacking you that's all like procedural and and everything and that is hella hella impressive it's certainly one of the most ambitious sort of takes on the the zombie and just essentially making that whole thing as, as detailed as possible that i've seen yet and even just for the sake of that obviously i check it out now uh even though i'm saying like i'm a little bit zombied out this only comes out next year so i got a lot of time to get over that zombie fatigue and hopefully by then you know we're good to go but dead island 2 really really look good um it certainly looked impressive all of the different effects that you can load onto weapons and that you can use different elements against each other where you can lure zombies into a pool of water and then hit the water with electricity and then they get electrified all that shit is really really fucking cool and i really really like it uh the last one that i want to give a shout out to is atomic heart now this is the one that still after having seen footage and everything like that i still don't know a what the fuck is going on in this game and b how i really feel about it it is a a action rpg shooter game so first person shooter where uh, it looks like a weird combination of half-life and bioshock and all of these things rolled up in together and essentially it's it's made by a a uh a studio that has spent a huge amount of time just building in like into the sandbox on this game and when you see the combat footage that you're seeing in the background right now you can see that there's so much effort being made into the way how different powers different guns all of that stuff intact you also see def deformation on you know the enemies that you shoot and everything like that so I still up until very recently I thought that this game was essentially just one big fucking cutscene and if this thing does come out looking and running and performing and all of this stuff that we're seeing on the screen right now it is going to be a, a massive massive step up in terms of what we can expect from shooters in general and just you know uh, uh what they're able to do with this genre it certainly is super super impressive in motion and um i'm trying not to get too invested in this game because i am a huge shooter fan uh you know i love the bioshock series i love the half-life series everything like that so when you start combining these games into one you literally have me by the nipples so i'm fucking good to go but uh i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep the the excitement levels on a down low and see how this further on develops but jesus everything that i've seen about this game every single time there's a cutscene or there's some a further reveal or something like that this just impresses more so that is generally a good sign for any game but when it comes to something like this 
I'm good to go. So getting onto the list, and by the way, this is in no way a list of one to six, you know, best to worst, anything like that. So these all have me excited for different reasons. Uh, whether it's the genre that I'm missing and I'm looking for something like that again because I haven't played it in a while or just because it's so unique or such a weird experience or just because it's something that just looks like a shitload of fun but these all are I would say in a way even though it seems hard to believe equal to me in a way and so uh, these are just the six and again I could have made a list of 20 but we don't all have two hours to sit here and listen to me fucking flap on about this so I, I went with six but these are the six that basically impressed me the most now the first one on the list is high on life now, high on life is essentially uh, uh, the, honestly it feels to me like it's even though it's not right because it's made by justin roiland who's the creator of rick and morty and and, and solar opposite so to me it feels like a game where you are in the rick and morty universe now it's not it's not at least at least that hasn't been leaked or that hasn't been said that hey this is canon and this is actually in the rick and morty universe but it certainly comes across that way especially once you start hearing the voices and all of that stuff shoot me fresh me shoot me see what happens oh don't i look so shootable ah you shot me i'm dead eh. all right there are you happy now well I, I didn't think we'd be allowed to kill him yeah normally killing children in games isn't isn't allowed but he's dead we killed this kid are, are you happy now we killed the kid a kid is dead now there goes our e for everybody rating um it's coming out this year still it's coming out right near the end of the year december 13 and it's essentially a shooter where you are you're, you're like a bounty hunter and so you're going after this alien race that has that has captured uh humans and you know are trying to use them as food and everything like that and you're doing this by using a type of weapon called a gatlian and these gatlians are essentially weapons that have personalities and that they can talk and you know everything like that um it's fucking hilarious and and each you know each what they've gone and done because obviously justin roiland was able to 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 lean on the let's say fame and fucking fire that he's been able to to sustain and make with something like rick and morty and solo opposites and he's been able to go out and seek fucking some of the best voice talent that is available for this kind of thing at the moment right now and each one of these weapons has one of these personalities behind them and if you listen to some of the interviews and everything where they talk about like how the voices actually ended up uh influencing how they designed the weapon and all of that and some of these weapons are fucking ridiculous like one of them is a is a is a knife a a, a close-up melee weapon called knifey and knifey is like the most homicidal fucking crazy thing you've ever seen in your life uh, I mean, this has Tim Robertson, uh, Michael Cusack. I can, there's no way I can remember all the voice talent, but it has some real fucking heavy hitters on there. Of course, I think we'll be seeing some of the the the, the voices and, and so that we've gotten used to in those two series, as Rick and Morty and Solo Opposites in here as well. But it just, it seems fucking ridiculously fun. Um, it's, it's a shooter and there's certainly enough shooters to drown us out. And uh, so I feel like it's good to kind of like you know put yourself apart from the rest and this certainly fucking does just that uh like i said it comes out near the beginning of december december 13th and it's a windows game as well as xbox game pass day one so those of you that have game pass will be able to play this day one as part of it and that's of course on xbox one and series x and x then number two and actually this isn't a brand new game a full new game all on its own it's actually a piece of dlc but it's a piece of DLC for a game that I enjoyed so much when it came out. And that's, of course, Nobody Saves the World. The DLC is called Frozen Hearth. And it's coming out fucking soon. It's September 13th, so it's literally within a couple of weeks from now. It's still by Drinkbox Studios, which is, of course, famous for, you know, making guacamole. And basically what it adds is it adds two new forms as well as some changes to the other forms that are already in the game. And it can, you know, includes a completely new activity called the tempering, which is like these challenge rooms and things that you have to do. And it's basically going to expect you to use your forms in different ways that you ever did before. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. I I was really impressed with this game when it came out. It's one of it's one of the highlights of this year so far for me. I kind of lost like a whole weekend and some extra days to it, where I just fell into the game. And when I woke up, it was like you know 72 hours later. So uh, absolutely looking forward to more DLC. I somehow wasn't aware that we would get more DLC. I think I knew, but I think I didn't know. But it's fucking great to see it happen. And that's of course, like I said, nobody saves the world frozen off. On to number three. And coincidentally, it's also a game with a three in the title, Company of Heroes 3. 
guys it's been a while since i've had a really really nice strategy game to play but i can tell you that that specifically company of euros like the original is one of my all-time favorite ranks in the top five strategy games that were ever released uh this is coming out november 17th um it's only on pc and spy relic entertainment and this is like to me like it would be like the ultimate version of what they've been trying to do with these games now if i had to choose a a favorite between company of heroes one and two i would obviously choose one but that's also because there's a certain amount of nostalgia attached to that because uh the company of heroes one was something that was completely new and and uh, in in the way that it you know played and everything like that and uh, the detail of the game the fucking story was great the campaigns were fucking fantastic the set pieces were good the mission types that you had and everything like that the territory control mechanic and all it was just it was a hell of a lot of fun and i fucking enjoyed it so much so to see this essentially now you know morph and come along into the 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 the, the final piece i suppose i don't know if there's going to be a company of heroes 4 i'm certainly not aware of them planning to do another one it's, it's also super early to even be talking about that but my point is that company of heroes 3 might in actual fact be their magnum opus the 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 main thing here is that you have many different sides many many different campaigns to essentially field but this also still has the multiplayer side of it the skirmishing and all of that each one of these races you know sides plays uh, you know slightly different and in some cases drastically different where you have the german side which is kind of more extremely defensive and slow and plotting but essentially just overwhelming you with defensive force over time and then i believe it's the italian side is extremely fast and has like um, you know micro outposts and that sort of thing so I was actually able to get some on hands time with this and try it out uh not a lot of time though i think i got 10 minutes in total which wasn't you know by no means for a game of this type it's not a shitload but i was able to see a lot of the things that the trailers have been showing us like uh the, you know we all play company of heroes i think for different reasons there's the strategic aspect to it which i think a lot of people are fans of the fact that you know elevation and height and you know positioning of your units makes such a big difference and that is emphasized in this year as well uh the ability to climb into buildings and shoot from the second and the third and the fourth floor and all of that speaking of buildings the other reason that people also like company of Euro heroes is because of the extreme detail that it has to uh you know things like deformity of the surrounding area and so on and the destructibility in this game is insane where you can shoot pieces of certain buildings without leveling the entire building and all of that and so then last but not least there's a new feature that they've included now called tactical pause which basically means that at any given time uh, even though this is a real-time strategy game you can pause the game and you can individually assign orders to all of your units everything like that and unpause the game and then essentially have them you know play like that so it has this extreme tactical side to it now as well which i'm a huge fan of now of course you can play the game without ever using tactical pause you could just play this shit like command and conquer if you want but it's a fantastic feature to in there and the people that are very much into the strategy and simultaneously hitting enemies from two sides and you know like uh, converging all of your fire on one you know group of units everything like that that will certainly be there so this looks super super impressive i'm fucking lucky well i'm not lucky but i'm happy i'm super happy we're actually getting it this year still as well so we're getting it in november so literally all of the games i've mentioned so far we're getting in the next couple of months which means just you know we're fucking blessed with fantastic games to play but certainly company of heroes 3 uh, is a break for me in like the strategic drought that we've been having i've been looking forward to a nice strategy game that i can play that i can sink some hours into and the fact that it gets to be a company of heroes game is a big fucking deal next up and honestly you guys had to know this was going to be on my list uh, at number four is the callisto protocol now i um i obviously started my streamer journey and my youtube channel all that stuff long after games like dead space one two and three were out and uh in general it's not like a genre that i play a lot on the channel but honestly games like resident evil um you know dead space that sort of thing like this kind of like horror but at the same time either third first person or third person like exploration kind of thing where you're collecting items and you're essentially fighting off enemies and you're solving puzzles in you know the 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 area and all of that just really really hit for me on a different level i fucking enjoy it and callisto protocol is i'm a huge fan of space horror 
I'm a massive fan of the original trilogy, the, the you know, Dead Space 1, 2, and 3. Of course, we know that there's a remake coming out for Dead Space. I believe it's Dead Space 1. Um, although I've, I've never actually made sure to see if it's a specifically a, a remake of Dead Space 1 or if it's a retelling of the entire franchise from scratch. But the bottom line is, uh, the reason why we talk about Dead Space so much in the same conversation as Callisto Protocol is because there's a lot of Dead Space's DNA in Callisto Protocol because, of course, Glenn Schofield, who is the original, uh, you know, uh, developer or the original, you know, uh, creative lead for Dead Space is on this game. Now, nonetheless, this, this is actually made by a studio called Striking Distance, and this is an entire new effort from them. But again, I like to use this term DNA, but this shows the DNA of Dead Space. It has a lot of the things that we enjoyed in Dead Space, like the weird fucking space monster creatures, the part that you can shoot their, their limbs off, the visceral melee combat, the, the puzzles and everything like that that you do with zero G and, you know, with your suit and all of that. And the minimalistic style in which this game's sort of HUD is displayed with all of the different modules on your armor, essentially showing you, you know, how much HP you have, how many bullets you have and all of that. Now, when you combine all of that together, this is what you're looking at here. This is essentially a, char a, a game where you play a, a character called Jacob Lee. You're a prisoner and an alien invasion hits this planet that you're a prisoner on. In, and you essentially have to try and unravel this fucking mystery because it seems like the warden of the prison was actually the one that triggered this whole invasion. And so you kind of have to take it from there. Um, this is also coming across, uh, you know, out on basically every fucking platform known to man. So, I mean, it's on PC, it's PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and X. It's all on there and it's coming out December 2nd. So super, super looking forward to this. Um, it's going to scratch an itch for me that I've had for a while that I've wanted to play something like this again. Of course, the game's visuals are fucking gorgeous. And one thing that I've, I've said a bunch of times when I've spoken about this game on stream and to people that have spoken to me about it is that something that I love so much is death animations in games, not just for the enemies that you fight, but also for yourself. And that's something that Striking Distance have spent a lot of time on animating. So all of the different ways in which you can die, whether that's being fucking eaten by a monster or pulled into a fan or, you know, anything like that. That shit's all present here. Wonderfully animated, fucking gory as hell and just looks really, really good. So super excited for Callisto Protocol, a good story based action RPG, third person, whatever the fuck you explorer you know whatever you want to call it is always good for me and i'm always good to go with that then the second last one and my actually my second strategy game on this list this shows you just how fucking hungry i am for strategy games is homeworld 3. now every single compliment that i you know leveled against company of heroes before in a way i can apply to homeworld 3 as well uh or not homeworld 3 but the homeworld franchise rather it's a it's a game that plays it's a strategy game but it plays in space so it kind of you know introduces this full 3d mechanic to it and uh kind of you know throws the whole sort of like you know rts uh recipe you know in a world because the point is now you have to think in you know true three dimensions and you have to consider being attacked from the top the bottom and from the sides you have to think about things like mining across vast distances and essentially you know formations of your ships as they're going and you know basically what makes the best formation you know missile frigates with some fighters backing them up or a bunch of corvettes or whatever the point is homeworld one and two were fantastic um i i really really enjoyed their next uh their next game which was well look cataclysm is also there but it's considered as outside the franchise for some reason i really enjoyed cataclysm as well to be quite honest cataclysm is actually my favorite homeworld game out of all of them now second favorite would actually be deserts of Karak, which was their sort of not spin-off but um a a land-based homeworld game basically and that was just as fucking good. So again, the point is that that Gearbox, they have the chops for making a game like this. And it's, you know, Homeworld 3 has been in the making for a super, super long time. And I think it, there's never been a better time than it is right now to actually release this game. Um, at the moment right now, it's planned for Q1 in 2023. But the footage that we saw, or at least that I saw, is still very much like alpha footage and so on. So... I don't know if that means we might see a delay or something like that because q1 is kind of like just around the corner that being said uh it looks really really good there's 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 new mechanics that they've brought into the game with these giant 
you know, space hawks, megaliths, and they have trenches in them, meteorites, all of that stuff. And so now it's far more strategic in terms of like your combat, like how you can, you know, uh, your your flying routes that you take with your smaller aircraft that you can guide them through these sort of like, you know, trenches inside a mega structure so they can avoid enemy fire and then come out the other side and fight. Very much kind of like Star Wars, you know, with the Death Star and all of that stuff, kind of like to a degree. Uh, I'm sure there's a little bit of that that they were trying to go for. That being said, it just, it looks really good. It looks like more of Homeworld. It's been a while since we've had that. At least, of course, we had the remaster recently, which was fucking great. But this is a brand new one, a continuation, if you will, of the story. And I'm just super, super looking forward to it. Something interesting that they've also hinted at, which I haven't been able to see any specific mention or footage or anything of, is the fact that the game also has a new co-op mode that it's coming out with which is in their own words a way of fusing strategy and roguelite which that sounds fucking great to me it means that it would be like one off scenarios or anything like that but it seems like a fun time uh, again cataclysm homeworld my was one of my favorite games of the homeworld franchise and one of the reasons why i liked it so much is because of the multiplayer where you could go 2v2 or you would go you know three guys versus the beast uh, you know all of that so it was just fantastic of course i don't think we're gonna see exactly that in this game but nonetheless homeworld uh man fuck, dude hell of a time to return and my body's ready for it and then last but not least on my list here of course is warhammer 40k dark tide now uh, i am as much as i love single player experience and all of that one of my favorite things is to jump on discord with a bunch of buddies and play a game together or against each other with a bunch of beers we just hang out and we essentially grind the game uh, we just shoot each other we shoot other things and we celebrate just having a good time now i think that this game is gonna scratch that so fucking much it's gonna cover that itch so fucking well that uh you know i i just can't wait to play this now I thought this was going to release a lot earlier this year, but it's still, it's it's kind of coming out at the end of November, the 30th of November. And it's coming out on PC, and then they say shortly after the 30th of November, we'll see it on Xbox Series X and S. Now, uh, this is made by a studio called Fat Shark, and it's based on the Vermintide 2 formula, which is essentially that it's a wave-based third-person role-playing game where you can use weapons. And of course, in Vermintide 2, you had... You know you could cast spells and you could shoot with bow and arrow and that sort of thing of course this is in the warhammer 40k universe so this has you know laser rifles and gatling guns and big fucking you know hammers with spikes on them and that sort of thing but um it is a wave-based shooter in other words you and either by yourself or you and your co-op buddies accomplish goals as you go through the mission and essentially you uh, you know have to fight off waves of enemies as you accomplish these goals so what this is basically is a group of agents um, you are part of that are investigating a chaos infiltration on a planet called Atoma Prime. And so all of your missions will be on this planet. And this will feature some reuse of certain areas as you're moving through and having to accomplish one type of goal. And then at a later stage, passing through again and having to do something else. Now, you can customize your class, your appearance and your gender. And this is where it's different because Vermintide kind of, you know, you, you played a class and that class was like the, you know, the way that it was. Whereas here you can choose like essentially the, let's call it the blueprint. And there's four, there's Veteran, Zealot, Ogren and Psyker. And then you can kind of like customize it to the way that you want it. Plus, you can also customize the appearance and the gender. Now, this will actually influence the responses that your character give in the game and the kind of conversation that they get into because there's this little bit of infighting in the group as well with, you know, interesting dialogue between them, which seems really, really cool and definitely does, ref you know, like reward, like, you know, replayability and all of that. So super excited for that. The game has a crafting system in it that you use to increase the value of your weapons, your loot and the strength of them and so on. And of course, you get these materials and all that by keeping and playing and there's your your essential loop right there and what they've mentioned is that when the game comes out it will have a plot that sort of develops in the weeks to come they mentioned that they're trying to or not trying to but it resembles like a destiny 2 kind of you know uh campaign very much like a live service 
um, even though this isn't a live service game, the idea would be that their story essentially develops over time and we eventually figure out exactly what's happening on, on this planet and what's going on with it. I'm sure that also opens the door for them to bring DLC down the line. But this just looks like a lot of fun. The fact that you have different classes that you can play with means that you can find the class that suits your play first. You know, if you like the melee going in the front, if you like the kind of like the blessing healer guy in the back, are you the ranged guy? And, and that sort of thing. So super excited for this. I'm a big fan of the Warhammer 40k uh, universe. I prefer that to just the standard Warhammer universe. I like the futuristic shit more. And especially this kind of aesthetic really does it for me. So super excited for this. And we don't have to wait a long time coming out at the end of November, as I said. And that's it for the list. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these games are on your radar, which one of these games I might have just put on your radar, and which ones you think I missed that you are super excited for from now until the end of the year and possibly next year. Of course, I didn't talk about God of War Ragnarok, which is a big fucking deal. Definitely, you know, super excited for that. Uh, there's no, I didn't mention Modern Warfare 2 or Warzone 2 or whatever the fuck you want to call it, which I'm also super excited for. So there are some big heavy hitters that I didn't pick because I also felt like these are the ones that most people already know about. They're already on everybody's dashboard and I might have been able to throw one or two onto your desk now that you might not have known about. But that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. And it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning, afternoon and evening wherever you are in the world. And until next video, fucking cheers. They want the best of me now, best of me now, best of me now, best of me. They want the best of me now, best of me now, best of me now, best of me. They want the best of me now.